Hi and welcome to the PowerEck YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the Microsoft Fabric deployment pipelines and how we can make it so that notebooks automatically know which data to reference from the data source and which lakehouse to write data to when deploying from dev stage to test stage to prop stage in our deployment pipeline. This means that we don't need any manual interaction when deploying our data or our fabric items throughout the deployment pipeline. Okay, so looking at our architecture, we have seven workspaces. We have the raw data workspace, which is in the bronze layer. Then we have three workspaces for dev, test and prod deployment stages in the silver layer. And the same thing for the gold layer, which means we have seven workspaces in total. The dev and the test workspace, however, will reference the data coming from the prod stage and will dynamically adjust to know which lakehouse to write to and in which workspace we are working in in our notebooks. We are transforming our data from the raw data to the silver data to the gold data. That means that we have a transformation process in our notebooks between the raw data layer, the bronze data, and the silver data and the gold data. Between the bronze and silver layer, we are transforming the data for example, we are adjusting the column names, changing some data types, writing a schema, etc. But we're also enriching the data. That means adding some columns, some calculations and so on. However, between the silver and gold layer, we're aggregating data, which means we are reducing the size of our data model and we're also making it more consumable for business users or end users. Self-service users, such as self-service analysts, might prefer to serve themselves from the silver data. Therefore, we have a more detailed approach and a more detailed data model view in the silver layer. When we reference our data from the dev and test stages to the prod data, what I mean by this is that in our notebook, we dynamically reference and check which workspace ID we are working in, and we reference the location of the data residing in the prod uh, workspace uh, lakehouse so that automatically when we deploy between dev and test it knows which lakehouse to write to but it knows where to read the data from. We have two deployment pipelines the silver and the gold deployment pipeline and the bronze deployment pipeline is not necessary as we only have one workspace with the raw data. The reason this is a separate workspace for example could be government pur governance purposes for example, administration purposes, security purposes, or user access could be restricted in the bronze layer in our raw data. Therefore, we could separate in the different workspaces or even put a domain to it, which allows us to uh, moreover secure our data. Looking at the next slide, we can see that here's an example of the deployment pipeline in our silver layer. What we do here is we have three notebooks. However, in each deployment pipeline stage, the notebook is the same notebook that we deploy between the different stages. So when we have a deployment pipeline and the deployment pipeline compares the data between each, work, work, uh, each workspace notebook, it won't find any differences because all the notebooks are the same and they adjust automatically and dynamically. For example, in our dev workspace, we have the dev, um, the dev, uh, the silver layer notebook, the dev notebook, and we import. We use Sampy Labs to import uh, Fabric as Fabric, for example, as written here, and we define a function which is called the path. And this path is important because this is what we reference later throughout the notebook to read and write our data. For example, here we have defined that for the workspace ID and the lakehouse ID in the reading, uh, we always reference the production workspace and lakehouse ID. That means that this is a fixed hard-coded value that we find in our, um, in our fabric environment from the, prod, uh, from the prod workspace, and we don't change this throughout the deployment pipeline. However, as you can see here, and most importantly, Looking at the um, workspace ID right, we can see that this is 
taking the SAMPI library and getting the notebook workspace ID dynamically and automatically. However, do notice that if we look at the later part of the code, the Lakehouse ID write, we can see that this needs to be an if statement with hard-coded ID because I cannot dynamically reference the Lakehouse ID from the workspace in which we are uh, using a library or a code. We have to hard code this. So if, for example, we say we are in the dev workspace ID, which is um, uh, which is uh, aut automatic, which is written, right? So we know that the dev workspace ID is a certain value and we put it in here. If it is that ID, then we adjust the Lakehouse ID to the dev Lakehouse ID. And the same for the test Lakehouse ID and the same for the prod Lakehouse ID. So it always knows where to write the data to dynamically. Then we define the delta path. For example, in this case, we're defining the delta path of the write, which will give us the ABFSS file path. And then we return the value. And this is what we reference later throughout the notebook code. This is all in PySpark. We do the same thing for tests. So all we have to do is deploy this code between the dev, test, and prod stage, and everything work, will work automatically. So now we've had a first basic insight into how we can have notebooks automatically adjust according to the deployment pipeline stage without any manual interaction. That means that we reference the data from a certain location. In this case, we make sure that the data is in the prod deployment stage workspace and we reference this in the test and the dev workspace automatically. However, writing the data is dynamic. For example, in the test stage, we dynamically write to the test, test lake house, the same for, the, for uh, the dev lake house, the stage before. If, for example, in the dev stage, you only want a certain subset of the data, you can do this in the code. And you can say in the if statement that if it is in the dev stage, we only want a certain subset of data so that we don't have an, a copy or a lot of data in the dev lake house when we are developing our solution. This allows us to dynamically adjust according to the deployment stage. And again, no manual interaction is needed so we can safely deploy the notebooks between the stages and just execute the notebooks and have automatic data transformations. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you want to see more of these videos and let me know what else you want to see.